Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and let's take a look at perhaps the most reliable supercoach man of his time but is he a chance to revive himself and get back to his very best? Scott Pendlebury, De Pendlebury as they call him, a man we can always rely upon year upon year to play game after game, score 110 after 110, 120, 105, as consistent as they come, a cool customer, great ball user, plenty of time, we all know the story. Pendlebury has been an outstanding player and in particular super coach wise has been a bloke you can lock and load, set and forget, be your premium from the start year upon year. Until last year, I think many people for a couple of seasons there's always been talk of the Pies need a good ball user off the back line, they need Pendlebury elsewhere, let's put so and so right in the guts and use Pendlebury's ball use here or Pendlebury's this over there, almost making up for stuff that Pies don't have but inevitably he ends up getting back into that midfield where he plays his best footy. Equally I think people have been wondering is when will he drop off even marginally? When will it happen? Will we see him be one of those guys who goes into his 30s and still playing great footy? Will it happen a bit sooner? Well our questions were answered last year ever so slightly. He averaged 106.7 if you want to get exact and he copped an injury, which is something we have not seen from him. Certainly only niggles at best, but that broken finger, which has caused him a little bit of trouble even in the international rules, restricted him just to 16 games. So it is worth discussing Pendlebury, a very, very interesting fellow to look at. I think he could be a great pickup, but I'll talk you through a few reasons for and against. I think firstly, Let's talk about the reasons for, because I think they'll take less. I mean, we know them. He's an outstanding player, all the stuff I said off the top. And he is only 29. He'll turn 30 in a month or so. I can't remember his birthday. We're not that close. But he's nearly 30. And I think that's not that old in football terms. We do get a little bit concerned when a bloke gets to the 30s and just can only sign one-year contracts from there on out. But the fact that Pendlebury is a man who possesses more time than he should. You know, he seems to always have that little bit of time and he's silky smooth, plenty of class. So I don't think age is going to necessarily lose any of his weapons or take any of those weapons away that makes him a great player. The concern might be that injury and whether that starts to be more of a factor. Being a finger injury, not too concerning. I mean, if he copped a little knee injury or soft tissue, could potentially become a reoccurring one, then we might be a bit concerned. But he avoided surgery, played the international rules. Yeah, it flared up, fair enough. But I think if he's out day one of pre-season, which to my knowledge he's travelling okay, I'd probably have to double check that. But of course he'd be on light duties at the moment. But I think if he is there JLT time, playing good footy, it'd be very, very hard to turn him down. I mean... Year upon year, we've got to pay top dollar for him. He hasn't averaged under 110 since 2009. I'd go through averages year on year, but I don't know if I could handle it there. There's a lot of numbers in there, and trust me, all of them are more than 110. 106.7 isn't anything to sneeze at, and he did still show that he could play blistering games. Six of his 16 games, he went 120 plus. A couple of hundreds in there too, of course, below the 120, but... He did also have games that were 76, 67 and the like. And in his last few games, which was it hampered by injury? Was he playing through injury? Well, he was. How much did it affect him? We can never know. We can never put a points value on that. But his last three games did see him score 78, 93 and 83. So clearly he dropped off. Clearly his average went below that 110 over the last four to five games that he played. So that gives us an opportunity. So the reasons for are obvious. We're getting one of the classiest, most reliable players who I still think at his best is their best midfielder in the Collingwood team. We're getting him at a price of 106.7. I haven't checked it exactly, but clearly it would be very affordable in Pendlebury terms. So if we want to take a look at the price, then that's something that we've really got to be pleased about because we know his numbers. The question will be, do we feel he can get back to it? Is this part of the downward trend that we see all players go through as they start to end their careers? And I guess that's where we can start to talk about the cons. Now, 
Clearly, he's getting a bit older. We all know that. That's fair enough. That's understandable. Is it going to be one of those slight down years where he responds? Or is it going to be where we see Pendlebury's 110 plus days gone and all of a sudden he's the sort of guy that just averages between 103, 108. They're still good points, but they're not super premium by any means. So just looking at his price, about the 586k. So year on year, we're looking at 650 at least, you know, in the 600s every year, surely for Pendlebury. And, and he had seasons where he was averaging 120 plus. So I think the question is, and, and this will be one that we won't be able to judge on stats through the JLT. It'll be one where we've got to watch him. You know, how does he look? Has he lost a yard, which, you know, not a yard of pace, but obviously when players get a bit older, they just look that slight a little bit more off. You can tell that they're entering the twilight years and they still have their good games three out of four, but then there's that 70 or 80 every month or every five weeks. And at the end of the season, they've still averaged 107. It's still a very good season, but it's not absolute premium. So I think we need to have a look at that and make a judgment call. Watch him physically and exactly where he's lining up in the Collingwood midfield, I wouldn't think blokes would be forcing him out because he's still so crucial to that side. But they do have a reasonably deep midfield. Overall, looking at Pendlebury, I must say I'm really keen on him. I know he's getting a little bit older. There's other premiums announcing themselves as perhaps you know the Pendlebury's of the future that are just ever reliable. And yeah, they don't have the runs on the board, but they're making the runs as we speak. Are we looking in the rear vision mirror going for Pendlebury? Is he yesterday's hero? I mean, they're things we've got to talk about and have a think about. But I think the risk versus reward certainly works in our favour. Looking at a guy, you know, we're talking in terms of if he gets through injury-free pre-season, which history will suggest he will. If that happens, we're looking at a guy who's priced extremely nicely for his history. He's no dinosaur. He's only 30 years old doesn't possess elements and weapons that are going to all of a sudden vanish when he loses pace or loses his jump or loses this or that. I think age is not going to destroy those for Pendlebury. And he's that good and still a good enough player that even if it wasn't an amazing selection and he doesn't go on to average 112 or whatever we might like, I think worst case scenario is 105, 106. I don't see him dropping off the cliff anytime soon. If anything, it would have to be to do with the body. I don't see his form dropping off immensely. Therefore, I think worst case scenario, we're still going to have an affordable guy that didn't break the absolute bank. I guess the counter argument would be, well, maybe I can pay 580 or thereabouts for the next superstar who, yeah, he averaged 100, 607, but bang, he's going to go bang, you know, probably talking Bont and Pallies, you know, maybe that's where you're at. Bond to Pally, perhaps the next superstar, next super coach, elite player, already been very good, mind you. Are we looking for a guy who's been there, done that? Can he get back to that and just go up four to five points? Or are we going to go, say, a Bond and Pally or one of those other young guys who it's been good for two to three years, still an element of risk given the unknown factor, slightly more up and down, doesn't have that absolute reliability because they haven't done it year on, year out. It's an interesting debate. I say why not have both? You know, personally, I've been looking very hard at the likes of Cripps and Bont and Pally, who I think are our next superstars. But equally, I think it's good to look at Joel Selwood and Scott Pendlebury, two guys who have been champions for us over the years. Yeah, it wasn't their finest season. Yeah, injury caught them a little bit. Okay, they're probably five to six points off where you'd like them to be. Could they get back to it? Absolutely. So there's no reason you couldn't have those four guys, you know. Not a bad midfield to go Penelbury, Selwood, Bontempelli, Cripps, Martin, Dangerfield. You know, there's six outstanding players. You're not paying over 600 k for every single one of them. And I think there are cheaper options in Iraq and elsewhere, which you might allow you to get away with that. And I think more often than not, we look to have six premium mids anyway. So definitely food for thought. I could talk about the midfield for a long time. Certainly could get off into a tangent there. But I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts on Penderbury. I think he's a guy that must be considered and should not be forgotten about as yesterday's hero, hero or a fallen warrior as I stumble through that sentence. But we've got to consider him. Make sure we watch him closely through the JLT. Can he get back to his best? 
Is he on a downward trend? Is he over the mountain? He's best maybe behind him, but he's nearly best. You know, he's very, very good. Okay, Pendlebury's peak is 120. Maybe Pendlebury at his 8 out of 10 cylinders in the later years is still a 110 guy. I think he could be, but let me know your thoughts. I'll be very interested to hear. So subscribe to the channel, and I'll chat to you soon.